take away. Do you have it on, Mark? Uh, oh, I don't have it on. the green on, yeah. Um, there we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, oh, here we go. That was a great uh, collection of uh, legendary drummers here. Uh, we're honored to be here. Thank you. Um, we also have a guest, uh, Donnie Mason from the Yanks, Connecticut Yanks, and uh, the Patriots, and uh, Connecticut Patriots. And uh, uh, your left side too. What's up? Your banner. And well, oh, I know. Yeah, oh, yeah, great. Um, and uh, the uh, the Jim Clark's group. Connecticut Valley. Field. Connecticut, yeah, Connecticut Valley Field Music. Um, we're uh, going to present uh, today. Um, originally, uh, Bill McGrath. Uh, thank you. First of all, you know, thank you to the to you, sir. I really appreciate the. Uh, the opportunity to, to, to come and talk and um, present uh, our, our, this is going to be about Bill Reamer and the, the Reamer uh, rudimental drum method. Um, Bill Reamer was uh, instrumental and uh, always a, a big part of drum corps, rudimental drumming uh, in general, um, between Archer Epler, McCall, Audubon, uh, he was a national champion, a four-time national champion, rudimental drummer, VFW, and uh, he certainly did a lot for southeastern Pennsylvania, the tri Philadelphia tri-state area, uh, brought rudimental drumming into that area. And uh, but Archer Epler um, started out uh, as a junior corps before World War II, and then when the war came, everybody went. To uh, went off to war and then came back into the senior corps. So um, kind of in a unique group, and they were national champions both times. Uh, and then Bill Reamer, of course, uh, individual champion, taught uh, uh, taught Rita Macy. Um, they taught Bill over here. Bill Milling was also a champion drummer, and. Uh, uh, Actually, Andrew Reamer, his son and I, uh, competed individually, uh, won a medal, uh, second place our first time out. Uh, Hugh Quigley was our judge for that, so uh, that was uh, interesting. We had a lot of fun, but uh, this group here, I'm going to introduce everybody. Um, now, I, I have, uh, maybe each person could say a little bit about themselves, but <laughs> or I can, uh, I can just tell them a little bit about each person. Um, What's that? Go quick. Go quick, okay. <laughs> okay, come on. Uh, we got Lily, Lily Bodic Middlebrooks, hair on snare. Um, her son Tom Middlebrooks. Um, uh, whoa. Okay, hello. Uh, Lily uh, began studying with uh, Bill Reamer in uh, 1970 and uh, remained in touch with him throughout the years, as we all have, um, up until his death. Um, she played with the uh, Independence Fife and Drum Corps and the Philadelphia Fife and Drum, or Old City Fife and Drum, um, which uh, we also, many of us also did. Um, and uh, Lily is a lawyer. Um, she received her degree from uh, Villanova Law School, uh, received her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Villanova, and uh, she also worked as a chemical engineer for DuPont prior to law school. So. Um, and then and we were all like family here, so uh, we're all brothers and sisters, as we all are. We're all, it's a big, fun group of drummers, a family. The drummers are different than probably most other musicians, right? <laughs> so, uh, musicians? Yeah, right. We, drummers are musicians too. Bill Reamer had a, a thing from a, uh, a postcard or a uh, greeting card, and he has it on his, had it on his bulletin board and said, drummers are musicians too. <laughs> So, uh, well, and actually through the years, uh, unfortunately, um, drummers weren't really considered to be musicians, but according to other people, they were just timekeepers. It was only in later years that drummers were, began to be respected as musicians, and uh, for many years they didn't know how to notate drum music. Um, they began uh, a toineau or bow um, back in the Middle Ages, started notating very primitively uh, drum notation. 
And then gradually, as, as mu music notation came in, people figured, oh, a rhythm, a quarter note is a quarter note. If you do a staccato, it's, a drummer plays it the same as a violinist staccato, or 16th notes or 8th notes. So, and gradually, music notation went on, uh, and, and drum music was eventually written down the way other instruments would be notated. Um, Yes, I'm going to introduce. I know I'm going around a bit here. Steve Gillespie, um, uh, old guard alum, alumni, um, also uh, Dallas Symphony um, Orchestra, uh, Temple University, uh, a uh, degree from music degree from Temple University. I also worked for uh, Hewlett Packard. Um, played with the Independence, but we all played in Independence Fife and Drum Corps. Um, I know, I'm sorry. That's all right, I'm just saving my shoulders. Uh, we'll get to the drumming eventually. Um, so, uh, we go to 1.30? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, Steve is, uh, well, actually we had a drumming out ceremony for Steve uh, at Independence Hall, from going from Independence Fife and Drum Corps to the Old Guard. So that was, uh, we had a lot of fun, and it was uh, actually, uh, we had that uh, on film. I actually have a videotape of that, Steve. So, uh, and as he's marching uh, to out of our corps into old guard, his we have these rifle frocks, and there was a big gust of wind that goes right in front of his face as he's like making a turn and going to the old guard. But in, in Gillespie style, he was uh, you know a great representative for Reamer and and the. Uh, and the old guard, and he was the uh, the drum captain for the old guard as well. And he also has a whole library of music. Um, if uh, anybody's in, I know we were talking to Mark Riley. Mark, uh, okay. oh yeah, there he is. Okay. Hey, we're honored to have the old guard here. Great to always have the old guard. We uh, Bill Reamer would take us to see. Uh, I'll never forget um, in '69. Uh, that was my first, um, as I went from uh, high school into, uh, I'm sorry, from middle school or junior high school into high school, um, I had my first experience going up to Deep River. So I know a lot of you have been to Deep River, but for those who haven't been to Deep River, um, you, you got to go. We have uh, a lot of Deep River people here. And that was an unbelievable experience to go to Deep River for me for the first time. But so we saw the old guard in 1969 in Philadelphia. They were playing in um, Rittenhouse Square, and Bill Reamer took us all out to see the old guard. And uh, that was pretty incredible. Then, and it's, there's still, uh, it's still an unbelievable, unbelievable group. Mark, we're glad to have you here. Thank you. And um, uh, Steve Kirkpatrick. Um, Steve. No, no bio. <laughs> no bio? <laughs> See, is it, is it easy? Yeah, it's easy. So I, I started, uh, Bill Reamer started teaching me in the fifth grade, and uh, later Andy Reamer taught me, and I was Independence and Old City, and had the honor of playing with these folks for many years. And that's, I'm a hospital administrator, and, and that's it. <laughs> that's, and he's a fine, talented, gifted drummer with Reamer student, and uh, we're all family here, and oh, Tom, uh, Tom Middlebrooks is going to uh, Kutztown, Kutztown University. Uh, his major is, um, look at the paper here. Although he's not a direct student of Bill Reamer, he is part of the Reamer family. Uh, anybody who's born into uh, one of our group here, former student, we're all, we're all family. So, um, I mean, we all feel like, like, for me, we call him Big. Big was, um, Actually, it came out of uh, um, Bill Reamer's son is also named Bill, uh, Bill Jr. And uh, I, it, it, it would be kind of confusing. And Bill, I, I don't know what to call. I would call him Mr. We call him Mr. Reamer, but eventually there was a big. Well, I, um, Bill Reamer was. I was just really fortunate. We're all fortunate. We could all walk to the drum lessons. Andy Reamer, his son, was my best friend, and. Uh, so I could just walk around the block. Uh, one day I was, we were playing jamming in my cellar on drums and Andy was playing these rudiments and I didn't, I'd never seen really gotten into, I just for, was first drumming and 
uh, Andy started playing power diddles, and I was like, how do you learn that? He said, oh, my dad's a drummer, not knowing that he was a four-time national champion. Uh, so here's my best friend's dad is a four-time national champion. So who else to study with but uh, Bill Reamer? So I just walk around the block, take lessons from Big. Oh, so his son, it would Bill Jr. So there's jun uh, little reams and big reams. So it just kind of went from little reams to big reams and just called them big from that. So if you hear us call them big, that's what it begins. Uh, now we got uh, Gwen McCausland here. Um, I don't know, we, I ask people to submit like little bios about each other. Uh, Glenn, maybe you could say a few words um, about the... Uh... Yeah, I, uh, I'm a student of Bill Mailing, who is a student of Reamer, so I'm sort of like somewhat divorced, but <laughs> close. I met Bill, interacted with him, I've never actually had lessons from him, but I enjoyed his company. Mm. Also did. In, in real life, I'm a veterinarian. <laughs> Drummer first. Drummer first, Drummer first better than Not yourself. making any money at this. And Bill Mellon. Uh, Dr Reamer, drum student. Um, McCall. And I was in McCall, and I was 12 years old when Bill came back from World War II. So we go back a way. And, uh, great time, great guy. And a, a champion drummer. Um, yeah, a lot of you guys might uh, remember what we used to wear in the old days. Piss cutters. Yeah. Hey, Bill, you dropped something. Yeah. Shall we play? Yes, well, let's play. Well, we don't want to, uh, everybody to get tired of holding their phones here. Um, <laughs> I also want to mention too that Tom is plays in the uh, Kutztown University uh, marching band and was also part of uh, uh, Westchester East High School, played in their band. So he's very active and he's just joining our group. Uh, he started playing with us, uh, what, a couple years ago? And he's doing really well and a uh, great drummer, a great, great person. Uh, privilege to have him. So here we go. We're going to start off with the uh, downfall of Paris. <coughs> Symphony. He's a principal percussionist for the Pittsburgh Symphony and also teaches at Duquesne. He couldn't be with us today, unfortunately. I know he, he's with us in spirit. 
Uh, and we, we have Bert Larini back there. He's uh, representing a drummer service, and thank you. Uh, thanks for coming. So uh, please, uh, you know, you know, buy whatever you can. Uh, <laughs> please support uh, drummer service. I know we have other uh, other purveyors here of, of drum equipment and sticks and drums, but uh, we all honor everybody's uh, participation and uh, what they've contributed in that regard too. Um, and Rita, who, I hope to have uh, Rita Macy Burner here. She couldn't make it. Uh, um, or I also want to have uh, Ray Eiler, who's a horn player and teaches arts rep. Or he actually, they're having a concert next weekend, so he couldn't make it. Uh, they have a rehearsal and an important rehearsal. But uh, I'll talk about Rita and her contribution a little later. But uh, right now, I just want to get to the technique. Um, uh, certainly in, in drawing, um, with all the talented people here, we, you know, we all know what a long roll, power diddle, all that stuff. Um, what we like to do uh, today is uh, just, uh, just briefly um, discuss uh, William Reamer's style and what he taught, um, the techniques. Um, that's Bill Reamer there, obviously, uh, in his, uh, it's like a. Something like it looks like a Hugh Hefner uh, with a pipe. Bing Crosby. Yeah, Bing Crosby. Sir, he's rolling over right there. Well, you know, the pipe. Uh, Got it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about, maybe you can go to the next. Shirley. Um, no, my name's not Shirley. You better watch yourself. For some reason, I can't see the mouse. Uh, well, anyway, um, just a second, I'll get it up. What, uh, what I'd like to talk about is the, um, the techniques that, that Bill Reamer taught. Um, probably a lot of you already know. Um, we're just going to talk about, and I, I want to include everybody else too. Um, you know, please speak out if you feel the need. Uh, the, the techniques that Bill Reamer taught, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, Got it. He basically taught three strokes with a fourth, fourth stroke being the half upstroke. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I know a lot of you are familiar with this, but we're just going to present what Bill Reamer taught us. Uh, maybe something new for everybody. But um, uh, Bill Reamer taught basically the downstroke, upstroke, tap and then the half upstroke for, uh, for the rudiments. Now, so with uh, like the long roll, we start, like this was uh, mostly influenced, Bill Reamer took a lot of trips up to Connecticut, and uh, so it was kind of a combination of the Mueller technique, well not the real Mueller technique that we all know um, today, that we, but uh, he did, was influenced by the Mueller Technique also um, Jay Burns Moore, the Jay Burns Moore style, and um, and Earl Sturtz. So um, this this is actually part of uh, one of his this is Big's writings here, uh, explaining about the downstroke, upstroke. He goes in a little detail about it, but the so the downstroke obviously we start like this as everybody hopefully does, and uh, the half upstroke we just. Be So that a half upstroke would just be like that, um, and it would be the same, same volume as the as the downstroke for the rolls. Um, now, if you're doing a paradiddle, um, then we then it would be a little different. Then you would start with the. Some students. Um, anybody from uh, uh, Reading Buccaneers here at all? 
Oh, yeah, oh, okay, former, right. Well, um, I've had a couple of my students, actually just one, um, I'm still, he's still in our group. Um, he's the uh, quad player for, for the Buccaneers, and he was just accepted for the uh, Cavaliers. So he's actually going from a senior core to a junior core, but he's aging out, so. <laughs> kind of usually you go from a junior core to senior, but he's going from senior to junior, so that was kind of interesting. But I notice uh, with a lot of uh, funny, and, and I've had auditions for uh, scholarship auditions at Drexel. I notice like I'll ask students to play a power double play. <laughs> for people to march, so I'll tell students, you need, and this is what Big would, would try to drive home with us, and you'll notice some of his, his notation, where they really dig into the, dig into the accent, right, everybody? Yeah. So, you play a part. You can march to it. It's hard to And uh, so everything, so we're taught with the, a lot of accent, that way you get a lot of power, dynamics. Um, so those, those three, the, the main strokes, the down stroke, the up stroke, and tap. So he would have, maybe you could um, go to the next. Uh, okay, so there, there he calls, uh, maybe you can back down a little bit. Sure. Uh, it says, um, uh, strike pad with stick and um, raise arm to sticking uh, uh, striking position of, of downstroke. Um, the up the upstroke is used to get you in position of downstroke. You must learn the position of the four to six inches above the pad so you can do it with your eyes closed. He said this is stick control. <laughs> so uh, you see his big uh, his lettering got real big at that part. Uh, so. Yeah, I think you would all agree. Um, I, I, you know, certainly in the Connecticut style, um, it's a lot of high hand playing. Um, now a lot of the drum core stuff. All down. Whereas in the Connecticut style, you know, high hands, a lot of power, and uh, and that was the other thing as we're playing. Uh, we also were, we would get together and do percussion ensemble pieces, so we're also incorporating, um, we're also incorporating some uh, classical techniques. Yeah, okay, uh, move forward. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do now is play um, uh, a McCall solo. Okay, this is um, from 1952, and uh, this was just after uh, Bill Mailing. Left, uh, Nicole, correct? Yeah, yes, 51. 51. So, this is you can hear the Connecticut uh, influence here in, uh, in the solo. So, this is uh, Nicole, 52. Ready? tribute to Bill Reamer, uh, Glenn and I play in Landcraft, and uh, it's a mix of Landcraft and some stuff I wrote. All set? Stood?
Um, okay, next, um, and we'll just go right through the speed parts here. Uh, yeah, we'll next we'll play uh, Arts Rappler solo. Um, this was in about the middle of their performance in 1957. Uh, and this is the year they won the Nationals. So. 57, uh, Audubon also won. Uh, Rita Macy actually won her individuals in 57, as did uh, my hot. So uh, and they actually played the same solo, 6-8 solo. So we're going to do a little bit of that too. Uh, but first, uh, Arch Rappler, 57. So those were little digisms or lemurisms, I call it. Uh, next we have um, okay. Uh, another thing that we're all involved in, besides our Independence Fife and Drum Corps, that uh, Bill Reamer founded along with Ed Boyle, a Pfeiffer, um, we all played in the Marple Newtown High School band, and Bill Reamer was. Uh, the instructor for that, so he, uh, so he's incorporating all these parts, and some of you'll maybe notice some uh, uh, similarities in, in the parts. Uh, but one in particular is the what he called the troublemaker. Uh, we call our group the troublemakers in honor of the six, troublemaker was a six-stroke roll. I don't know if how many. <laughs> of the folks uh, know that term, the troublemakers, but in drum corps in the 50s, uh, troublemakers were the, were the six stroke roll. So uh, that's what they call him, he didn't call it a six stroke roll. And he was one of the first people to use six stroke rolls on the field as well as rhythmic cues. So Bill Reamer was innovating, doing a lot of innovations in, uh, in drum corps uh, the main thing is he was bringing in the Connecticut style of drumming to uh, to drum corps that normally didn't really uh, feature that at the time. So uh, Bill Reamer going up to 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 Dram, the Deep River Ancient Muster, uh, and he would take his groups with him too. He'd take the, uh, McCall. I know I have a picture of. You can probably fast forward a little yeah. bit. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, we didn't. There was some of the uh, Mueller stuff. I didn't. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can see the pictures of uh, certainly of um, Jay Burns Moore and Starts or now that right there. That's John. That's William Barry. William Barry. I don't know if, you have, if anybody's heard of uh, William Barry, but yeah, he had this collapsible drum, which you can see oh, there. I've seen one. Of and them. we we used to have a routine where we come out of Deep River and we had this case there that that Barry's holding. And uh, we would come out on the field with a case, and oh, pe people wouldn't know what it was. So we'd open up the case, and here was we'd take out a bass drum and put it off like it's like a magician, like a magic act. And here was yeah. So there was the uh, the case that that bass drum. And uh, Benjamin Podemski, that's um, uh, Bill Reamer studied with Benjamin Podemski. He was the principal percussionist for the Philly Orchestra, and he was he's on the recording of uh, Fantasia. So not Bill Reamer, but. Benjamin Podemski. Oh, there's another thing I want to talk about real quick. Um, right there, uh, one of the things that, um, another important thing uh, is the sticking um, uh, that, that Reamer would use in, and also in drum compositions. It's kind of a universal sticking, but if there's any kind of a rest, uh, a being that I, I also talk about this uh, at, at Drexel too, I try to bring in my Reamerisms into my Drexel teaching. But, um, and this certainly is nothing new for, it's like preaching to the choir, a lot of this I know, but, uh, but Bill Reamer did incorporate these, these Podemski methods and which eventually became like the universal sticking for, if you're doing 16th notes, and you leave out 
out the first beat. So instead of alternating, it makes more sense. So if you got So here we're going to do, this is a uh, 6 eight solo from Marple Newtown. From What's that, 1971. A lot, a lot of interplay, too, between the bass drum and the snares you'll find. So, so here we go. Things that, he was really like a father figure. It, it, there are a lot of uh, we know, we've heard stories about instructors that that use intimidation. I know uh, I've talked to people with some well-known drum teachers who were very intimidating, and they would say they would see him on a field and they would uh, be cowering in fear because of their personality. I know some people come on very strong, but Big was just the total opposite. He was like a father. And, just very, very gentle person, but yet an amazing drummer. And then later, a, a great filmmaker. Uh, now we're gonna play this Macy 6-8, which this was the uh, solo that um, Don and Rita played. So we're all gonna play it together. And, uh, here we go. <laughs> Some of these things haven't been played in, since they were written. Well, this was done when? This was uh, 57, it's also 57. Ready? Okay, uh, next we have, um, 
This is true. Uh, we call this, uh, this is a uh, cadence. It was also a drone solo too um, uh, for our Mark on Newtown. We have these Mark on Newtown pieces, but uh, they're pretty interesting for uh, uh, for considering it's in, 19, in 1972, 73, doing these, a lot of, uh, a lot of troublemakers, six stroke roles in the, in the pieces. Um, so I think you'll find uh, this interesting for a high school drum section. This is called uh, This Is True. It was named after one of the snare drummers had a, an expression. He would, he would say something, we'd say, this is true. So we just called the thing, this is true. <clears throat> Yeah, that's a good medium. medium. 